Hello, welcome to Wyvern Minis. Just a quick video today, painting some zombies for HeroQuest. I've been doing quite a few videos recently of my personal journey to upgrade my HeroQuest set with 3D printed alternative miniatures. Um, and I really like these zombies. They look like some kind of medieval Saxon city guard or something perhaps that's been resurrected and used by Zargon to protect his treasures. I got them from Naferati.com, the same place I got the mummies. I'll put a link to the mummy video below. Um, but same place as those. And I really like these guys shuffling along, leaning on their spears. I think they look really cool. Um, I wasn't quite so keen on these ones, so I didn't bother printing them out. Um, but I did get these ones with the axes because um, I thought they were good. And I needed six, so that was perfect. I've painted them in the same way as my other HeroQuest miniatures that you'll have seen in the other videos. Um, uh, black prime and then a zenithal spray of wraithbone over the top of that just to give the shadows a kind of a slap chop type method using contrast paints over the top of that um, i decided on dreadful visage for the skin i used that on the mummies and thought it looked cool a really kind of subtle purple color a little bit like dawn of the dead zombies you know but not quite so blue um, i thought that worked pretty well um, it's subtle but um but good of course, as with all my videos, this is just what worked for me. So, you know, do whatever you think works for you um, and whatever you think looks good. I decided this looked pretty good for my zombies, so I went with it. I decided to give them yellow tunics. I've seen some artwork of Saxons wearing kind of yellow and it looked pretty good to me. Um, Use Nasdaq yellow because it's kind of brown and muted. It's not vibrant yellow. Um, it's kind of got this sort of natural look to it which I thought looked pretty good. I considered painting the tunics on the different zombies in different colours because that would also look quite sort of natural to be you know like that but I thought it made more sense if they kind of had a uniform if there were perhaps some guard that had been resurrected and also because they're just baddies in Hero Quest I wanted to be obvious that these are you know all the zombies it's clear what they are um, and it's quicker to paint them in a batch like this. I then went on to do their sort of bits around the collars. I thought red would be good for that. I did go for a very vibrant red, bar red here, which is um, quite bright and vibrant, but I thought that offset nicely against the, the muted yellow. Um, and as I was gonna wash everything later, that was gonna bring that down a little bit anyway. The ax wielding zombies have got a little bit more of a kind of tunic, I suppose, not just a collar bit. So they've got a little bit more red on them than the, uh, the spear guys, but you know, that's fine and it adds a little bit more variety without going mad on lots and lots of different colors. I used Storm Fiend for their tights. Um, I really like this color, it's kind of a blue gray sort of thing. Um, and it, to me, seemed like a good color to contrast against the yellow without overpowering anything. Um, and it's only on a small bit of the model, um, but it looked, looked quite good to me. And with all the brighter colors done, I moved on to the browns. I decided to go for a real dark brown, Saigor brown, which is very dark and opaque, so I thinned it with a couple of drops of water. Um, I used that for the spear hafts, the, the axe handles, and for the boots. Um, some of the zombies have got kind of straps around their ankles, um, which I think you could potentially go to town and make them look really cool, but I decided just to paint them all brown um, for simplicity. Again, these are just monsters that are gonna crop up in the dungeon and hopefully get killed very quickly by the heroes um, and then <laughs> recycled <laughs> in another room probably. For the other browns on the model, um, the straps, the belts, uh, pouches and all that kind of stuff uh, and the shields on some of their backs, I used Gorgrunter fur. Um, in the past I've used many different browns for all sorts of things trying to make it all look different. Um, I've tried to shy away from that, particularly on models like this which are mobs of minions that are destined to be killed very quickly you know you don't need to necessarily spend all that time um, making it look completely individual and sometimes it can make the model look even more confused if you do that whereas keeping to a, a smaller palette of colors can sometimes make these models look better um, at least it it reduces the kind of visual confusion that it can cause um, and you know do I really care if it's a different shade of brown on one strap than another? Uh, certainly not for these. Um, they're not going into a Golden Demon competition or anything. They're just to be played with um, and dispatched by heroic heroes 
on their quests. Um, so uh, yeah, Gorgrunt of Fur is what I used. Um, I really like that colour, it's kind of slightly orangey brown, um, it's quite a bit lighter than the Cygore brown. Um, so having the two different browns on the models I think works really nicely. Um, I was kind of curious whether it would look good against the yellow, um, because as I said, Nasdreg yellow is sort of slightly brownish and a bit muted, but actually the Gorgrunt of Fur works really nicely against it. And although I tried to be very careful when I was painting to not go over the, the wrong bits, because with this sort of slap job contrast type painting, um, you you ideally want to not go over the bits because you've got the transparency of the paint and you're trying to make the transparency or translucency of the paint work for you. Um, but actually over the, the Nasdaq yellow, the Gorgrunt fur was fine. Um, you'll find that if you start with the lighter colors and then work to the darker colors, the darker ones tend to be a bit more opaque and you can get away with putting those on top of um, a lighter color. For the metallics, I moved away from contrast paints and used Iron Warriors base color from Citadel. Um, this is a really dark silver color and I think it works great as a base coat for lighter silvers because you can dry brush or highlight over the top of it, but also on its own can make a really nice kind of dark, old, dingy sort of silver which is what I'm doing here. And I think that suits zombies pretty well. They've been knocking about in an old dusty dungeon for a long time. Their, uh, their metal work isn't gonna be nicely polished. So I think that works really well. And I just applied that all over the, the spear tips, the axes, um, the helmets, bits of chain mail, armor plates, and bits on the shield. Um, and uh, yeah, looks really good. I think with a wash on top of it, um, it looks fine. and. Again, I didn't go to do all the little details like buttons or clasps or anything like that with any metallics because for these minions, I don't think it's necessary. Um, they look they look really good, especially on the tabletop um, without going to that level of detail. Now, basing, I think, is very important. Um, if you've got similar bases uh, across your minis, then you can make a kind of cohesive force. Even if the models themselves look quite different from one another, you can make them look like they belong in the same army if they're standing on the same bases. Um, in the old days, classic Goblin Green was the uh, was the go-to for, for the, like, the heavy metal standard. Um, I really like using custom bases, and for my Hero Quest models, I have printed out a load of these flagstone bases. Um, really nice design. They're very simple, um, but you've got a few different designs of flagstone, so they're not all exactly the same, but they they all look. Like they're standing on the same thing and i paint them in a way that roughly matches the hero quest board doesn't match the the mat that i've got quite so well but when they're all consistent they look the same they all match with each other and it's pretty close to what you've got on the mat um so to do that i start off with um basilicanum gray which is contrast paint that gets into the recesses um and then to sort of get the smooth parts looking a bit nicer because contrast paint sometimes pulls a little bit on the smooth bits of the flagstones. Uh, I then do a little dry brush with um, Dawnstone, which is a, a nice kind of mid-gray. And you can see that the the difference in tone isn't enormous between the Basilicanum gray and the Dawnstone, but I think it just sorts out the pooling a little bit and it makes the edges look a little bit better and you've got a slight subtle highlight in there. It's a step that you could potentially skip if you were so inclined, but it doesn't take very long. I use the Artist Opus um, dampening pad and and try to kind of roughly follow Byron's advice um, on the uh, on the dry brushing, which seems to work quite nicely. Um, but it just smooths it out, and makes the stone look um, look nice, I think. So almost all done. Um, you could leave the models here if you wanted to; they look fine. Um, the contrast paint is designed to give you. The, uh, the kind of shading and highlighting all in the one step. Um, and we've already used the, the zenithal spray, which is adding more depth to the shadows as well. Um, but you can add even more. Um, you, of course, you could highlight on top of the uh, contrast paint. There's nothing wrong with doing that whatsoever. It's just another step you can do. Um, I'm not gonna do that in this case. Uh, I don't think it's necessary, but I do want to add a wash just to really deepen those shadows a bit more and give a bit more definition to the model. I also find putting a wash over the whole thing um, can do quite a good job of 
sort of tying it together into one cohesive model. Um, so the wash I'm using is Army Painter Strong Tone here. Uh, that's my favorite one. It's a really good kind of mid neutral kind of brownish wash, which I think works on multiple things. Um, they've got the soft tone, which is a bit lighter, and they've got the dark tone, which is a bit more black, um, sort of like null oil, I suppose. Um, and I use those occasionally, as I use other shades and washes as well. But by far my most used wash is this Strong Tone, because um, it just, I think, gives a really nice effect. Uh, I like the kind of slightly dingy effect it gives, kind of dark, kind of, you know, quite natural though, and it does tie everything together. Um, so I thin it down 50-50 with water in a little pot and then just apply it liberally over the model with a wash brush all over the model and all over the base. Uh, it takes quite a long time to dry so do this step and then walk away for a while. Um, but I think although it looks very messy while you're doing it, once it dries the effect is, is pretty great. So there's just two more steps to complete these models and they're all about tidying up the base. Um, so the wash will have darkened down the flagstones somewhat um, and I wanted to bring them up to be a little bit lighter. Um, that will match the uh, the board a little bit better and just give a little bit more um, sort of definition to the stones as well. So uh, I do a, a light dry brush using grey sear. So grey sear is normally what you'd use as a base coat for, um, for contrast paints. is one of the alternative that they recommend. Um, I find that Wraithbone tends to work a bit better. Gracie is an interesting one because you can get some, some interesting dark sort of tones out of it. Um, but uh, Wraithbone, I think, normally gives you a better result. Um, but it, it's it's worth trying both. But I actually found that Gracie is a, is a really nice, quite light gray for doing this sort of stuff on the flagstones. And it's just a light dry brush. Again, smooths out because you get the same effect with the wash as you did with the uh, the basilicane and grey contrast paint you get a little bit of pooling so this will smooth out the stones a little bit but also provide a little bit of highlight on those stones so that they they pop a little bit more and i think because you've got quite a dark model on top of it having some slightly lighter stones underneath gives you that bit of contrast between the base and the model which is quite a nice effect so the final detail is to do the edge of the bases um, I favour black at the moment and I find that the AK intense black is, as it says, intense and very matte and nice and smooth. And to help get it nice and smooth on the base room, I use a brush that has a chiselled edge. Um, it's nice and flat and it's about the same width as the base, so you can actually go around in, in one go. Um, and that means that I don't get any um, sort of marks on there no brush strokes or anything on the edge just a couple of thin coats round with the slightly watered down black paint um, and it looks great it really makes the model seem complete to do that nicely um, a lot of people use different colors on their base rims you know the classic goblin green uh, in the old days it still looks great i think um, and a lot of what is it is it still legion drab that they use at the moment at games workshop sort of tan brown color um, that's quite popular um, and that looks great as well but I I really like black it's, it seems to seems to work um, and uh, yeah finishes the models off really nicely um, so that's it I did sneak in an extra little thing actually uh, I took some inspiration from Game of Thrones and the blue-eyed whites that they have coming over the wall um, and just applied a little bit of Lothurn blue on the eyes of these guys just to make it look like they've got slightly glowing magic eyes um, which I thought was quite cool. Um, for a lot of these scale models, I just don't bother doing the eyes um, because when you're looking from a few feet away, you can't normally see them anyway. Um, it's only when you start doing <laughs> the close-up photography um, that you can really see them. But anyway, I did the eyes on these ones um, and I think they look nice, uh, a bit glowy, and so that's cool. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with how these came out really quick only a few hours painting to do the six models um, and that included a bit of thinking time of what colors to do and all that kind of stuff and i wasn't rushing or anything so it was nice quick uh, sort of paint scheme to do um, and they're going to look great down in the hero quest dungeons um, taking on the heroes very soon uh, so yeah the hero quest games are still going on and uh, they had one just the other day um, the kids um, so I'm running them with the kids 
uh, my, my little daughter is five and a couple of slightly older boys and their dad uh, they play as a band of heroes the teamwork that they're displaying is great they've really got the hang of the game uh, in terms of an intro game for, for young gamers it really is perfect um, my only slight gripe with it was the quality of the models which is why I'm printing out my own and making my own set so that I'm happy with them so uh, yeah if you like this um, check out the other the other videos that I've done about HeroQuest um, I've got uh, plenty of other videos in the works as well at the moment um, not about HeroQuest about various other uh, other things because I like playing lots of different games um, so uh, yeah come back check that out like and subscribe uh, the channel and hopefully I will see you again very soon um, and there we go zombies done cheers bye